a very good afternoon to one and all i miss tanvi kadam going to represent on behalf of dr vn medical institute of management studies who have organized a webinar on achieving problem solution fit and product market fit and it's a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker today who is mr girish dandige so we will just get a brief background about our speaker third is a business transformation consultant and an ex program director at tcs cio tata infotech he had done his be in electrical engineering from dharampit high school nagpur pnit nagpur third has over 38 years of experience predominantly in it strategy large program management growth strategy for startups across domains like government manufacturers utilities construction and defense he is an excellent communicator a good coach and an expertise in large program delivery he is a founder member of disq that is digital impact square which have contributed in setting up 125 seat innovation center at nashik providing golden opportunity for the innovators to make an impact on billions of lives through their innovative ideas so have also won two awards that is the tata innovista 2015 and bma young entrepreneurs award sir is a speaker at international conferences at member board of studies of autonomous university which introduce appropriate changes to syllabi to ensure industry relevance he is also a member of board of studies for mca in a reputed autonomous university so without any further ado Let's give our guest speaker a round of virtual applause and let's welcome him. In addition, we also have with us Ms. Kalyani Shinde who will be co-presenting this webinar. Ma'am is a founder and managing director at Godam Innovations. She was born and brought up in Lasargaon which is known for Asia's largest onion marketplace and have come from farming family. She joined Digital Impact Square at Nashik in Jan 2018 and started working on Godam in her final year of computer engineering. Godam is working on agri-tech sector specifically in onion ecosystem to redefine warehousing and reduce post-harvest wastage for farmers in storage. Godam is the first company to be working on an IoT-based solution to reduce post-harvest wastage in onion storage. Her main aim is to help the farming community and it's an honor for me to welcome you ma'am over to you sir thank you very much am i audible yes sir you are great thanks for uh, such a gracious and uh, <clears throat> great introduction <clears throat> thank you so achieving problem solution fit and market fit this topic is uh, suggested by bedek institute of management institute the innovation and creative council the topic is too big uh, for just one <laughs> session it could uh, take up one semester also it is that big and uh, you will see when kalani will present her own life story how big this is but we are trying to give you a capsulized small like amrit you know concise uh, this thing in uh, just about an hour so it's a big challenge for us and we have accepted it for the great audience uh, you people thank you for this opportunity without further ado we'll go ahead so thanks uh, bedekar institute thank you dr joshi thank you uh, professor punjani and everyone there and i must thank digital impact square and of course kalani to co-host with me ya kalani the screen is present sir is it visible to you yeah yeah it's visible uh, can we go ahead next yeah the scope of this presentation has been given by um, professor 
Punjani. Uh, basically, he said steps or processes to build innovation product fit for target market and integrate market research for innovation planning. And we could add based on real life experience. The way we are going to approach this uh, one hour session, which may go up to 70 minutes, uh, we thought that you know design thinking methodology uh, would fit the best for such a complex thing. When you talk of a complete um, solution to a problem and market fit, product fit to a market, you know. So we'll touch upon very briefly again, the concepts of design thinking methodology and how they apply. We'll try to touch base on this. Secondly, uh, I don't want to give too much of a GAN because there is a lot of information overload already available in the internet. So what is it that special that we can bring to table? And uh, since we wanted to promise you value for this, your time of one hour or plus, you know? So I thought of sharing some experiential learning out of my personal experience how we failed, how we succeeded, okay? And from there, how can you, you relate? Because you are going to be the entrepreneurs, the innovations, okay? You could become Tata's, Birla's, Adani's, Ambani's, Bill Gates, okay? And uh, Bezos and whatnot. Or you could become Kalani Shinde, who's going to be my co-host. And sky is also not the limit. So what better than experiential learning? So we're going to present you with real life success story of a startup. I'm personally mentoring uh, a few startups. Uh, I'll touch upon a couple of them and then we want to present to you real life story, which is Kalani's story. Yeah. And then of course it will be followed by question answers. So the strategy is about 30% to 40%, uh, I will use the time and rest, I will give it to Kalani for a real life story. Even during my discussion, I'll try to quote real life examples through experiential learning so that it be doesn't become a typical lecture or a classical, you know, slide, flipping the slides. No, that's not how I would like to do it. Today also happens to be Ramdas Nomi, the great <clears throat> saint of the recent times, who was the guru of Shivaji Maharaj, like uh, Sri Krishna was the guru of uh, Arjuna. Sri Krishna told Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna. Arjuna was just a nimitta and it is for the common man. Similarly, uh, Das Bodh is the grantha written by Samartha Ramdas Swami for the common man. And today happens to be his Nirvana Din, Samadhi Din. So I pray my obeisances, pranams to Lord Sri Ram, Lord Ramdas Ji, and we'll start with a small prayer. If possible, you can also say Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Parabrahma, Tasmay Shri Guru Vedmaha. मातृ देव हो पितृ देव हो गुरु देव हो आचार्य देव हो माता पिता गुरु है आचार्य गुरु है एंड गुरु ही ईश्वर प्राप्ति का मार्ग है सो फ्रेंड्स प्लीज नेवर एवर फॉरगेट योर पेरेंट्स माता पिता आचार्य गुरु थ्रू देम ओनली यू कैन रीच द गॉड योर गॉड रियलाइजेशन कैन हैपन ओनली थ्रू दैट what is God realization? Your own satisfaction. What you want to be? You want to be good, getting a good job, car. You want to be an entrepreneur. Okay. They're all parts of your own excellence, business excellence, personal excellence, spiritual excellence. You can excel in the society. So this is the way. These are the gurus. Please never ever forget them. With this brief introduction, let's start our main topic. So this is the approach, design thinking process. It's a five stage process. Empathize, 
define, empathize with the people, understand the user needs, end user needs, define, define, refine, redefine the problem, ideate, prototype, build a small prototype and test it. And again, this is an iterative process. Go back to the drawing board. If required, redefine the problem, re-ideate. We have, we talked about digital impact square, which is a innovation center of Tata Consultancy Center in Nashik. I was a founder member. We started in 2016 as a fallout of success of Kumbh Mela. Kumbh Mela in 2015, <clears throat> was a great success story. So before I go further, I just want to give you a couple of uh, stories or examples, and then you will be able to relate. <clears throat> when you talk of Kumbh Mela, what comes to your mind first? Probably stampede, uh, not good, very, not very good hygiene, okay, filthiness, lot of crowd, isn't it? So this is what happened in 2012 um, in Allahabad, now Prayagraj, 2012, on a Shahi Snan day, uh, some 96,000 people were displaced in Stampede, okay, in Kumbh Mela, on a single day. And something like 26,000 plus people were never traced out. Means, kya hua pata nahi. They may be dead. So this kind of a tragedy on a single day. So this was a problem statement we took up. This is seven years back. And in Nashik. So Nashik, Dr. Ramesh Raskar, who is MIT Labs, Camera Culture Lab uh, head in MIT Boston, uh, who was part of the Kumbh Foundation. And we from TCS were associated with them. They came to TCS. Can you help us solve this and make a difference to the Kumbh Mela? We'll turn the tables upside down and we want to make Kumbh Mela as a great success. And it, its recognition should be one of the best events in the world where, you know, about 35 million people throng in about 45 days of span of Kumbh and it should be very clean, zero stampede, zero loss of life. That's the problem statement. Now, how if this is the problem statement, how do you solve it? By best use of technology. What technology? A, B, C, D. What kind of projects you do to achieve that? These are the projects. And we used all these design thinking approach, empathize, design, ideate, prototype, test, build very, very simple projects about about a dozen plus projects and every single project was successful and Kumbh Mela was a great resounding success. Uh, Dr. Praveen Gedam was a municipal commissioner of Nashik. Uh, Mr. Eknath Dawle was a divisional commissioner of uh, that entire region. Then Mr. Janardhanan was a police commissioner. Now he is joint director of police training. And we had very personal connection with all of them. And that is where the human centricity came. How did we use the human centricity to understand the problem? And in an iterative way, defined, ideated, prototype, tested, and went back and then delivered a small prototype, make it better, and then come out with a final solution. So Kumbh Mela was a great success, uh, which led to formation of Digital Impact Square of Nashik, we said, uh, let's, since this is a resounding success, let's make this as a um, ideal success story for the generations to come. And there we had the vision, the mission statement was impacting lives of billions of people and creating a social impact. How can we use high technology with low cost creating low cost solutions for the common man's use, okay? Creating large impact in the society at large, okay? It is not restricted to Nashik. It is not restricted to Maharashtra. It is 
all pervasive and what kalani is going to talk about is just one such example there are host of other projects which have already touched millions and billions of lives so that is about kumbh mela now one more example i want to give my personal experience before we go ahead uh in one of the projects uh, of course i will not name it's it is in a utility sector i will not name the customer but the cio chief information officer he said uh, it was a sap implementation for utility um he said i don't care about your methods this is my method i want you to do prototype first prove to me that you are able to deliver a solution like this and then only we will go ahead i said sap methodology is different um prototyping is not part of it he said i don't care if you want to do the project this is the way you will have to do otherwise i'll stop the project so again you see people centric approach see we had a choice sorry we don't do it but is that what we did no we have to listen to the customer customer is god customer is king our existence is because of the customer now customer could be a corporate customer it could be society it could be government it could be just about anyone who is giving you inputs who is the end consumer so you have to respect the customer empathize with him or her understand the end needs and then create the solution so and that was a resounding success story and the same cio accepted our solution he was so happy that in the world conference of sap utility organized by sap he went and presented our solution to the world okay because we listened to him and okay no problem so we delivered the solution another success story again it started from failure uh top legal firm of india very very high stake customer um we were halfway through the project it was a portal development for that company um landing page everything back end design everything was done and during the initial part of the user testing the customer said no no this yellow background looks shitty and we don't accept it um so change it you tcs uh, you have a nice uh, t startup blue color right why don't you give that to us so, sir we had suggested earlier but uh, you chose uh, this no 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 change it to blue and uh, these are small little changes i'm making it my team has suggested so i understood i listened to him and uh, said sir this is not like a paint brush just change the color from yellow to blue and uh, because it has back end design changes which means the entire code is going to change and it's a complete rework we are going 50% uh, back so we won't be able to deliver the project in time he says you don't seem to have can do attitude i'll call up your ceo ceo will kill someone that someone will kill you are you prepared i'm the senior most program director there and this is what i have been roughed up in front of his people and my team <laughs> and i said sir i'm not interested in killing fields it's good so what are you interested in i said i have one point agenda single point agenda and that you are delight you are satisfaction you are so cool now good so just deliver what i want <laughs> and we delivered what to do so back end management how to do that is all up to us the buck stops with me as a project manager if you are an entrepreneur if you are a project manager buck stops with you okay so whatever it takes to you need to think about without finding any excuses how to go about it with these two let's go ahead yeah so by now you must have understood empathize means understanding the human needs involved solving the right problem 
without getting agitated. That's something very, very important. Set aside your assumptions. You know, I may be great program director. I'm, I'm one of the best executionist, best SAP ERP implementer, but I couldn't argue with that CIO of that company. He says, fine, thank you very much. I want prototype to be done first. You show me that it passes all my toolkits, then only. I have to so set aside my own assumptions, understanding my intelligence, so to say, and accept it. Similarly, example of bridge Karakao, this Caribbean islands of Dutch in the year 1888, about 140 years back, you can say, uh, there was a project to connect uh, two cities by building a bridge so that people could commute. And it was a very costly thing that time. So they said, let's put the toll. So, and how do you recover the toll? From rich people, they will pay. For poor people, they will not pay. How do you define the criteria for rich and poor? Am I audible? Is it is it uh, is my pace too fast or too slow? Is it is it okay? No, sir, you're audible. And is my pace okay? Are we are we comfortable? Yes, yes, you are you are okay. Okay, great. Thank so they said so they said that you know uh, people wearing shoes and who can wear shoes are let us consider them as rich and they will when they cross the road uh, cross the bridge let us collect toll from them people without any footwear or chapels let's not charge them now they decided this way what happened the result was actually rich people they used to pull out their shoes put them into a bag and cross over the bridge without paying the toll their psychology <laughs> and people who are actually poor, they said, I don't think I'm a poor guy, you know. So they borrowed shoes from someone by paying extra money and they put on shoes and went, paid the toll and what. So exactly reversed. So <laughs> the whole problem statement, you see, the psychology of the people was not understood. The empathy the human centric approach human centric this thing was not followed so did we did, did they solve the right problem no similarly you have to immerse yourself physically into the environment and gain insights when you are talking about farmers issues we see farmer suicide and all tcs had got beautiful solutions to solve farmer suicides a lot of solutions we had done okay and one of the, Kalani is going to talk about a similar issue of uh, farmers, how they can save their crops of annuance to be specific and that she will talk about. But I'm not talking about political issues of farmers, you know, so-called farmers, no. But you want to solve the issues? Kanda Bhakar, Bhaji Bhakri, sit with them, eat with them, machhar katne do vaha. Unless and until you are in that physical environment, you will not feel the problem. You have to feel the pulse of the customer. Then only will you be in a position to understand, relate to the people as well as the problem. And both are equally important. Next. Am I... Making sense? Is is it fine? Yes, Tell sir. Okay. Yes, great. sir. So once you understand the needs, as I said, you have to relate to the people. Imagine there is a shake hand. I'll show you. There is a shake hand, pakka shake hand, firm shake hand. You are able to. One, this is customer. This is you. The warmth of your shake hand, through the warmth of your shake hand, you should be able to convey your seriousness, how serious you are about the business. If it is a lose, here is you and here is a customer, you see, there is no interest. There is lose relationship. Okay. So a simple thing like a shake hand example also can convey a lot of sense. 
okay so this is a human centric way how serious you are about understanding defining the problem do you understand the problem are you able to relate to the problem that is what is important are you able to relate to the customer defining and reframing the problems in human centric way simple crystal clear problem statement kumbh mela example i have given okay zero stampede zero loss of life that's all very simple to understand isn't it similarly red dot was one one of the projects in uh, disk digital impact square the problem statement was zero loss of life due to lack of blood whether the patient is in hospital or on the road or wherever that's it zero loss of life due to lack of blood now behind that you need to connect with the blood banks private official government you know collect a lot of data primary research secondary research, that is all separate but this is a problem set very simple clear next yeah kalyan next click ideate see ideation is you think deep deep understanding deep ideation creating many ideas in ideation sessions you can have multiple ideations like thinking out of the box okay and there are different techniques so we had design thinking room okay jaise pehle raj gharane mein wagaire pehle krodhagar hote the okay rani ko kabhi gussa aata hai to krodhagar mein gayi hai matlab krodh karne ke liye gussa aane ke liye bhi ek separate room hoti hai <laughs> so here when you ideate we had a different room design thing probably if she has a slide she will show you also so lovingly you can accept the ideas of the people or vehemently you can fight should be phad sakte ho no no i don't oppose so basically free flow for of ideas to come at agree disagree and then come out with small prototype next test the ideas adopt a small prototype create a uh, minimum viable product okay small prototype and then test it next so test it again automated testing um, manual testing unit testing test with the user everywhere across you know you should have a uh, human centric approach take the user in confidence across all the phases so that you don't get surprises in one of the largest projects that we uh, executed more than 550 crore project i'm talking 7 years back no not 7 2005 6 so this is about um 15 16 years back mumbai municipal corporation bmc bombay municipal corporation some 250 plus citizens and services e governance problem okay and the time of user acceptance testing users surprised us with some things again i am not finger pointing anything but they said no no we don't accept it simply we don't accept see my, your system is not working here you are tcs and you said lot of things system is not working here then we said uh, what is happening let's go to the root of the problem it was sap implementation the ram of the desktop was insufficient we said here is a mail we had already said it it requires 4 gb or 8 gb i don't remember now i think it was 8 gb that time. and they had only 2 gb ram we had asked you we had told you that you need to upgrade these machines what you got are low end machines no no don't find fault with us it's not working so he said no problem what you do is let's you order it and we'll show you on a uh, another machine with 8 gb and it just work properly so very simple take them into confidence test it in an iterative way empathize with them redefine the problem ideate with them how could we do it better reprototype and retest and then in an iterative way go ahead okay ultimately the results is what matters in tcs or in tatas there is a 
TBEA model, Tata Business Excellence model. All Tata companies, 80 plus, you know, they're all covered and governed by TBEM, Tata Business Excellence Model. Every year, there is a competition. Who is best? And on 29th of July, which is uh, Sir Jardy's birth anniversary, the best company, you know, is awarded and there is an innovation award, Business Excellence Award. Anything more than 600 is considered to be a very good score. 600 on a scale of 1,000. And there are some five, six parameters, okay, out of that results, business results is one of the highest results out of 1,000, some 450 points. So business results is something most important. I'm not interested in your story. I'm interested in what results you have produced. That's it. Customer says, boss says, okay, your end user is going to expect what problem you have solved? How is the problem fit? How is the product fit to the market? Are you solving my problem or not? All those things. Next. Problem solution. I think we have discussed this. It's the most, so that fitment is most important. I explained you with the handshake example. You have solved it if. Next. You already built, you have a minimum viable product that is a prototype. Next. You have found early adopters, a set of users, select close user group, so to say, who are willing to use their time and resources to test your product. Next. If you have managed to solve the problem, which suits their needs for the early adopters. Yeah. And finally, you have managed to charge enough for your solution. Nothing is free in the world. There is no free lunch. Even for this, you should be willing to charge to the customer, though reasonable. Okay. Though reasonable. But, and the customers should be ready to pay. For example, I am mentoring one innovative startup for children who are engaged in holistic child education. For the children of age zero to six years. Yes, zero to six years. Okay. So they have understood the problem, how the child grows, how the brain develops. 90% brain development happens between zero to six years. So how can we give the best to the to my child as a as a parent? Every child wants it. Every school wants it. You know, so that they have their own niche, isn't it? So they had child psychologists, pediatricians, um, educationists, all of them on their board. What are the products? What are the categories uh, which need to be done? What is child development? What is holistic child development? Understand it. Talk to the children, play with the children, ask parents, ask teachers, toddlers, nursery, okay, and then come out with the product. And now boost my child is boostmychild.com. That's a company. Boostmychild.com. So that's how problem solution fit happens. Okay, next. Product market fit, the same thing. What I said, same thing applies here. High level of satisfaction by large customers, large set of customers. Next. High retention rate. Yes. They are ready to repeat customers. Okay. Or they give you more. Next. Growth. Yeah. Product growth. Your revenue grows. You get more customers. The repeat customers also. Next. High product usage interval. I mean, they are long. They are not one-time users. They are a sustained users. Next. Product. See, user in product market fit. You In this pyramid, you can see user interface. Then you have feature set, value proposition. What is the value proposition? What is the problem you are trying to solve? Product market. I just gave you an example of this holistic child education. 
you know, in six areas and 21 sub areas like physical development, emotional development, you know, leadership. You, yes, leadership. I mean, you will be surprised. A zero to six year child, they also can develop leadership skills. Undeserved needs, such things. <clears throat> so that is the way basically uh, you can address this and understand it. Next. Next, Kalani. Yeah, this is a little, um, you know, I would like to skip this, except that, you know, how product market fit, there are ways to measure quantitative measure, market share, growth rate, and all you can measure. Qualitative, this is what I would like to touch upon by giving examples. Sumant Mulgaukar, who was a Tata Motor CEO, again, human centric, people, people, people. Always remember, friends. People-centric approach is the most important thing. Easy, okay? Paris is special like that. So what are your problems? Why Tata trucks are best? Or how do I improve my sales? The CEO himself used to go to the dhabas and have lunch with the truck drivers in a uh, disguised way. As a simple, he like a truck driver, you know? and then try to understand their problems. Chalo, khate khate. Okay, dal bhakti khate hai. Uske saath. To kaise lege aapko ye tata achi hai kya gadi? Kuch issues hoge? Nahi, nahi, sir, baat achi hai. Ye to, ye, these are very good features. Or somebody will say, isko ye improvement karni. Achha, achha, thik hai. He used to note down and work on that. See, that is, and it comes top down. And when it comes top down, the whole institution, it becomes institutionalized. Okay. And that is how you can be a successful CEO, successful entrepreneur. Okay. Next. Simplest way to understand product market fit is you have created a product, but next, are you, is there someone ready to pay? Is the customer ready to pay? You may think that, you know, I have done this product. I have spent $1 million and I want to recover it in two years. So this is the charge I want to give. Okay. So, but is the customer ready to pay? That is the proof of pudding. Proof of pudding is in eating. Yeah. So that is a final thing. So I think, yeah, go ahead. So, friends, I just wanted to, sorry, I have taken a little more time, uh, Kalani. Um, so, uh, Professor Kunal, uh, can we extend this session maybe by half an hour? Yeah, sure, sir, you can. Okay, because Kalani, I have robbed some time just to, I wanted to elaborate some of the things with personal experiential learning and personal examples. So, I will hand over to Kalani now. And she, this is Kalani is a young entrepreneur CEO and coming from, uh, you know, Nashik uh, Digital Impact Square, where I was a founder member and a program director there. So I have personal very great passion and attachment to that place. And uh, the students over here, um, I think 60 plus, right? About 70 plus students and uh, audience, they would be able to relate. You know, they can also become like Kalani or, you know, become. And as I said, don't don't copy someone. You can create your own niche. So over to you, Kalani. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, on, we'll take questions. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. So uh, you've already, uh, you know, you've uh, built the foundation here. So I'm going to try and uh, talk about all the aspects are covered, but in in real time how we have implemented those in our journey. So to start with, hello everyone, I'm Kalyani Shinde, founder of Godam Innovations. Uh, we have been working in this space for past four years. As mentioned, I joined Digital Impact Square in around January 2018. Um, uh, coming from a farming family background and being born and bought, brought up in Lasselgao, uh, which is known for Asia's largest onion market, I was very closely associated with this ecosystem since I was a child. And um, I knew uh, certain aspects of this ecosystem.
ecosystem or even uh, the challenges farmers were facing and other people in this ecosystem so i wanted to work uh, there and that is when um, this journey started and i applied to digital impact square with this idea of working in onion space and uh, here we are today so uh, to talk about uh, to start with uh, there is a huge ecosystem like sir said you know there is an area where you want to work in but now you have to identify a problem where exactly you are going to intervene or what problem you're going to solve or where exactly you're going to create a solution to so to talk about uh, initially we need to understand how large this ecosystem is so when i talk in our case India is the second largest onion producing country which produces around 2 crores metric tons annually. Around 70% of this production is being stored in the warehouses for a period of 6 to 8 months. Um, all of these facts everybody or in their new but I think the most important fact of this or the challenge is that every year there is around 40 to 50 percent wastage which is happening due to n number of reasons. Now imagine you are growing 100 kg of crop and 50 kg is going waste every year. So your investment, time, effort, money, whatever you're putting for 100 kg, you're only getting outcome for 50 kg of that crop. So that is when this ignited that here is a larger ecosystem challenge and it is a country wide challenge which every, everybody is facing. Can we bring a solution to that? Uh, currently we are in Nashik. So while you are looking at the ecosystem, while you are working or defining a problem, you need to understand the location you have started working in. Today we know we are based out of Nashik because Nashik contributes to around 15% of total India's production. So your location, your ide your identification of place where you're going to start doing research or start working is very important and that is how it shows. Again, Maharashtra is a uh, leading onion producing state in the country followed by other states and that this this just gives us a layout to sh to see how large it can become or we always have a vision in our mind that okay this is where we have to reach and we have started from nashik right now so when i think the next part of this ecosystem when we talk about the product market fit and i think again and again sir was also talking about empathizing with your customers understanding the uh, entire space going on field so this slide i want to tell you that initially we had to understand this ecosystem in and out okay? okay onion there are different parts it comes from seed it is sown it is harvested it is stored then it is sold in the market but as a team when we are going to bring in innovation in this space we need to understand the entire ecosystem so we made an effort and categorized these areas to understand better and we knew that each of these areas like crop cycle may onion warehouse main market may there are different opportunities which we can work in or intervene in but also we uh, we have to understand where our skills lie so as of you guys i would suggest that all of uh, a lot of people have this question that how do we start working or we do not possess the skills so i think we need to look at the areas where we have the skills in and then use it uh, specifically to that uh, segment so for us we knew that we are a tech background team we do not have domain expertise where we can work in crop cycle so with tech background solution warehouse is the only space where we can intervene we can bring an innovative uh, solution over there which we can help farmers to reduce the post harvest wastage and along with that we also knew that maximum wastage is happening in warehouse so i think it was a win-win solution it was the right fit and that is when we uh, you know, deviated or routed our uh, attention towards warehouse space. And that is when we started specifically or dedicatedly doing research about warehousing, look at, uh, looking at different kinds of structures, seeing why exactly wastage is happening in the warehouses, whether it is the structure, whether it is the microclimate cha changes which is happening in the uh, warehouse, then how are they identifying wastage today in the warehouse? All of these challenges is something we uh, found when we were on field. So I will talk about in detail how we did our research and how we went on field. So this has been our journey so far, you know. So let's let's divide it into major four areas. OK, when we started, we did secondary research. Secondary research is something when you study whatever is available online. If there are any articles, if there are any blogs, whether there is literature survey, you study and understand that. Then you go to do field research. Now in field research, you interact with people involved or as a part of that ecosystem. It is farmers, merchants, whoever. Uh, they may be then once you have completed your research 
secondary plus field and if these two are not done then your research is not completed let me tell you so then these two together you have done your research now you're going to analyze that research to find out okay which are the areas where you can start intervening in where are there are opportunity areas for you to create a solution and then you start innovating ideas doing experiments as sir was talking about prototype creation testing it on field and that is when that is how it grows. So let's go step by step. When we did secondary research, what are the aspects you have to keep in mind? And for us, what we did. So first thing which we did as a team was create a knowledge, knowledge database. Now we were four members in the team. So everybody started going online and looking. But I think the best way to optimize your time when you're doing research is everybody has to write down some summary of whatever article you've written. So we created a common Google sheet where we listed certain key points where we uh, where we had read in that article and then we used to paste a link to that article or paper so this helped us to even go back up till today we go back to this knowledge database to see anything we uh, read that time is helpful today you know so that is how the first step is so we had read some articles about onion ecosystem about uh, warehousing and anything related to this ecosystem is was a part of that the second thing which we did, I think this is funny and probably sir would relate to this. So this is just a chart which very initially we uh, wrote down. So the nice handwriting which you can see in colored sketch pens is mine. So I wrote it down with other team members and we were sitting and writing and the scratching in all of that which you see on top of that which was done by our mentor so she was our design mentor saloni and uh, she was like what is this research you are doing there is saloni, huh? yes yes saloni uh, so uh, she was like, what is this? Uh, there is no figures here. There are no questions here. You're not talking about cause. You're not talking about effect. You're just writing some random things. Even if you can see in the uh, lower part, there is this yellow color my ink I've written. There's temperature and humidity. She has also circled that saying, okay, temperature. I know temperature is required, but how much temperature? Do you know that? So that is the level of uh, intrinsic uh, research you have to do. And yeah. that is what... Uh, took us forward and then we discarded this sheet and we build you know new sheet so this is how it looked later on so there are a lot of figures it was very much segregated so this is how you have to build on or learnings you get through uh, in your research phase then i think this is an another aspect very important in your secondary research which we did and it is a stepping stone towards your primary research this is a stakeholder map now when you are talking about an ecosystem or an area you want to work in for us the onion industry ecosystem we do, we wrote down each and every player who can be a part of this ecosystem so if you can if i'll read out some names there is a farmer there is a labor supplier there is retailer there is a market committee there is fpo uh, there is government there is pesticide and fertilizer supplier so all of these people who can be included in the ecosystem has to be put down here now there are different colors which you can see on this slide so these different colors depict how much um, how much influence they have in this ecosystem so the red ones are direct stakeholders so these are very important players for us then there are indirect and then there are the outer circle stakeholders so that is how you know who is your priority to interact with and how much information you should get from them and how much influence they have in this space so this was a stepping stone for us to go on field. Now we knew that we have to interact with all of these people to understand the ecosystem well. So see, for example, today we are working for onion farmers. So if we would have only went and interacted with onion farmers, then we would have not been here. It was very important that we talk to merchants as well, uh, government as well, market committee. So there are perspectives of everybody. They have different mindset of the ecosystem and that is very important to understand and know. And that is how this was converted so let's come back to the first slide again now we have done the secondary research we dotted down how many people we have to meet uh, we listed all the uh, articles and we read that now we go to field research now before we go to field research i think there is something very important we guys have to understand so Field research is not key. You randomly go and start talking to anybody on field. You have to have an understanding who you are going to talk to. Do you have an, uh, do you have a, uh, 
intent written down for that. So this is just a sample which I wanted to show you. So this is a research intent which we developed to go on field. Now basic details which have to be covered in intent like who are you going to meet? Where are where is the location you're going to meet? Uh, have you taken their prior appointment to meet? What is the time? Then what is the intent? So what are the things you're going to cover in that meeting? You want to understand about what aspect exactly? Do you have a questionnaire prepared to interact with that particular person? And then I think the most important thing which uh, it has you know helped us a lot was defining roles so we were four people on the team we cannot just four of us stand and there is a farmer and we're just talking to him now only two people of uh, my team were un understanding marathi the other two didn't even understand hindi so their job was to click pictures of course, with the permission of the farmer. The mm -hmm. other person was recording our conversation again with the permission of the farmer. And then all of that data, when we came back, we used to, you know, collate the data from the interview plus the pictures plus the recording. And that is when we had a, we used to make most of the time we had with the farmer. We have to, we cannot, so you cannot, you know, rely on having a second interview. You might not get a chance to again interact with that person. So how do you make the most out of it is, uh, you know, record and uh, document everything you have. So this is the first step we used to do after coming back. So any conversation which we used to have, as I said, two, only two members of my team were talking in Marathi. The other two also had to understand what conversation happened. So I used to, after coming after the interview, I used to sit down and transcribe the entire conversation. Like, even hello do you want to have tea even this i used to transcribe from marathi to english and write it in this format and then these this i used to submit it to my other team member who understood english now that team member had to go through this entire conversation and there was another step that team member had to do that person did labeling now labeling was helped us to understand what are the aspects of conversation so then second time when you see this conversation you know what important now this labeling, there was a color code we used decided. So red decided was a problem. Green was things work. Gray was neutral and yellow is data gap. So all of these color code helped us to understand the interview better. And while they were coloring and while they were, uh, you know, labeling this data, the team members who did not understand Marathi also now knew the entire conversation because they had to read the conversation. Now we are on the same page. So that is how it helped us very well. After we labeled, we did was clustering. Now clustering helped us to put, so for example, how many challenges in the warehouse are related to rainfall. So we put all of those in one category. So now we have to do or create a solution for rainfall or for temperature. So these were clusters we created and this is how we categorized the ecosystem. This was another thing which we did. Whoever farmer we interacted with, with on field, we had a profile of that particular person. So we know that how many of our farmers fall under same category and that shows that we have covered all users. In. So see, for example, if you see there are some brands who are saying that we are here for 18 to 25 years age group. Mm -hmm. So for them, this profiling is very important because their user is only 18 to 25 years old. So there, that profiling is how it plays an important role in this aspect. So that is what we did. Now, let's go back to seeing how we went from interacting, uh, documenting, of identifying opportunity areas. How did we do that? So when we said we had uh, transcribed the data, labeled the data, clustered the data, now we wanted to see on field what images showed us and how we can convert them into opportunity areas. So I'll show that to you. So if you can see here, what we did was we clicked, we took this picture with us. So this is just a layout of a warehouse. We took this on field and we put this figures, which you can see five feet, 11 feet. So we used to go to random like farmer warehouses and we used to collect this data. So we had now an understanding of how a general warehouse looks like and what is the difference between a, um, you know, a knowledge resource like suppose NHRDF and source people sharing what a warehouse design should look like and what exactly a farmer has on field. Then we had clicked some pictures on field and we documented them. What are the challenges they are facing in today's warehouse and all of that. So this helped us to understand the entire ecosystem well and the pictures also contributed to our research. 
Now, when we are coming from a step where we have done our research and we have understood the entire ecosystem well in secondary and primary research and images and uh, recordings and everything. Now, what you have to do is how do you make sense of the data to identify opportunity areas? Now, we used a method which is a part of design uh, methodology is how might we statements. So, for example, there was a challenge which we found on field that farmers are over stacking, stacking a particular compartment. They are putting onions more than height of more than five feet. Now, what happened when they put more onions more than five feet was the pressure on the bottom onions increased and because of that the wastage rate was increasing. So, this was an important uh, challenge we identified. Now, how we put that is who is the one who is going facing this problem? What is the problem? How, what impact is that problem creating in the ecosystem? And what is the opportunity area? So if we can prevent rotting, uh, if we solve this problem, so the statement goes like, how might we address the issue of over stacking of onions so that the farmers are able to prevent rotting or store excess onion in best possible way. So this statement itself has your problem and it also incurs your opportunity area and solution. So this is how you have to jot down. So this was one problem. I think we have one or two slides of how and this is which converted to our solution. So also, so as you see that uh, compartment well apart. Now, if on this slide you can see late identification of symptoms of wastage was a major challenge on field. And the farmers, due to that, the farmers cannot identify earlier and they were facing more loss. Process. Mm -hmm. So we made mm -hmm. might be statement to see that if we can address the issue of identifying rotting onions or sprouted onions before itself, we can stop the further spreadage in the warehouse. So that is how the opportunity area was built on with this uh, method. And mm -hmm. uh, here we are today. So where this opportunity areas and ideas and uh, research converted into was a solution. So our solution lies into three major areas. So first is smart infra. So when I talked about uh, farmers overstacking the compartment, now what we do is we help farmers to do minimum infrastructural changes in the existing warehouse. So they do not overstack the compartments. They do not uh, put more onions as um, then it is supposed to hold. So that is going to help reduction in the wastage overall compartments. Second part of the solution, as mentioned, late identification wastage was a problem. Microclimate was a problem. So we created an IoT based hardware device which does two things. One is it does real time microclimate monitoring that is temperature and humidity on the field. And second thing which it does is it senses the gases emitted from onions. So we knew that there is a challenge of late identification. So if there is a challenge of late identification, what we have to do is we have to build something to early identify. So to early identify, we did our research and we found out that onion as a crop emits some gases out of it. So if we can sense those gases earlier, we can alert the farmers where exactly in their warehouse wastage has started. And that data we were sending to them through text alerts. That is what Godam talk is about in local language. So the farmers can take an informed decision about their crop and they can stop the further losses or further spreadage which was going to happen. So this is how we defined our solution based on the research and all of the journey we followed through. So when Sir was talking about product market fit, I think again now what is important is let's get back to the first slide when I told you that India is the second largest onion producing country. Now we need to understand how large this ecosystem is. So we understood that today in Nashik itself there are around 60,000 warehouses. If we talk about India level, there, there are 350k plus warehouses. So this is how your market is. Now if there are warehouses, if there is a wastage which is happening, I of course know that, that my product is a fit over there because I have been interacting with farmers on every step of my process. This was a user centric approach which we took. So this is a product which is re a requirement from the user. So it is an exact perfect fit and ecosystem also or the market scope also says similar kind of a thing. Okay. Now uh, I think there was a strategy of how do you uh, product market fit and how do you market this solution. So uh, we have to, you know, we have to pick up on some points of how I'm going to sell this today. So how I'm selling it rather. So there are certain farmer producer groups in the uh, industry or ecosystem. Now I'm reaching out to farmer producer groups other than direct farmers is because there is already a trust which is built between the farmer producer group and the farmers who are registered under them. Now I'm going to 
play on top of that trust. So I don't have to go from scratch and tell them, OK, this is Godam and I have to build that trust. The farmer producer company has already done that. I'm just going to associate with them and I'm going to reach out to the farmer. So it becomes easier for me to reach a larger audience of farmers that way. Then I think uh, our, another idea was that can we go to major onion producing regions? So see, randomly, as I said that, why are you about 10 minutes? Yes, yes, yes. I'm almost done. I think this is the last slide. Great. So uh, if we say that um, uh, Nashik, uh, we are in, in Nashik right now. So why we are in Nashik? Because Nashik contributes around 15% of total India's production. So we need to have locations identified where major onion producing regions are there. And then we start. So I think with this slide, which I'm trying to tell you is if you have a solution already developed and you know how big the market is, you need to have a strategy to plan or place that solution in the ecosystem so you don't get backfire and you have those early adopters, you have those people who are ready to pay and then you start sort of scale from there and then already word of mouth is there and marketing is there and then you don't, you don't get some that. prizes. Okay. Yes, so then initial is where you have to plan it very, uh, very properly and you have to co-create with your users. So that is Excellent. what this is important about. And I think that is it from my side. Uh, so I can ask sir to continue from here. Yeah, yeah. thank you Kalyani. Uh, so Professor uh, Kunal and uh, my dear audience. Uh, so we made a small attempt to address uh, a huge uh, topic having a huge scope. So the sum and substance of it, if we have to concisely say a uh, couple of slides, human centric approach, people first, that is the mantra, that is the gist of the whole thing. It is summarized in this Sanskrit Subhashit, which says, Amantram Akshara Amnasti Nasti Mulaman Aushadam Ayogya Purusho Nasti Yojakastatra Durlabha. It means there is not a single word, akshar, which says mantra nahi ho sakta. Similarly, there is not a single muli or vanaspati, which says aushadi nahi ho sakte. Koi bhi nalayak nahi hai, koi bhi purush ya stri, koi bhi vyakti, ayogya nahi hai, nalayak nahi hai. Magar, Yojakasta Pradurlava, what is rarest of the rare thing is people or the person, the entrepreneur, the businessman who knows the project manager, program director, program manager, call it whatever, is very rare. Such a program manager, project manager, entrepreneur who knows how do you make the best use of all of these, whether it is akshar, jisse mantra kiya jata hai, whether it is vanaspari, jisse aushadi ki ja sakti hai. Any person, how can I use the best of him or her for the betterment of the society, for solving the problem, for product market fit, for solutioning for a given challenge or a problem. That is what it means. One more nice example I have, There is one studio, Moonlight Studio in Nagpur. There is a punchline. If you are beautiful, we'll capture your beauty. This is about 50, 60 years back. If you are beautiful, we'll capture your beauty. If you are not, we will make you beautiful. <laughs> And it really touched my heart. What a customer centric approach. What a people centric approach. Okay, any customer would be delighted to go and take a picture there, isn't it? So this is a people centric approach, studio example. I thought we'll share with this. Hope you like this presentation. Recommended reading. These are the two sites and there is a lot of things that I could have given, but these are very close to my heart. So please do go through these, explore in details. Uh, DigitalImpactSquare.com is on the lines of Atal Innovation Mission under Niti Aayog, okay, at a government level. 
that is what tcs foundation is trying to do for solving societal issues societal problems using the cutting edge technology and creating low cost solutions to solve society problems and creating impact for billions of lives second one landmark education is helps you to understand who you are and how you can be a better person how you can be you can get the best out of it for anything and everything okay next i think we are towards the end yeah these are our coordinates that's my email that's my website contact and that's kalani's uh, uh, details so with this once again very big thank you to bims and dear audience thank you for your patience uh, i promise value for your time i'm not sure whether we delivered it but feel free to give your critical feedback to us and that will be an opportunity for us to further improve as a continual improvement for our next session wherever we go thank you very much yes thank you so much and i think we can take questions from uh, anybody if you have yeah any questions or to be any questions you have you can put it in the chat box i think or you can unmute yourself and ask or you can unmute and ask yeah yes so friends if you have any question or doubts you can raise your hand or unmute yourself also you can write down your doubts or question in the chat box idea was to share live experiences rather than giving a internet based knowledge lot of information overload is already there so experiential learning is what we thought we will share that was the whole idea hope we are successful feel free to give us critical feedback and ask questions and we'll be more than happy to answer to the best of our abilities thank you akshay for your comment uh, we also enjoyed doing it and i we really hope it was helpful to you any questions and also ma'am i think we already have also shared our, uh, that so even it is possible for to us any way for questions you want to connect both okay so i guess there are no more questions here now so before concluding the topic i would like to say sir you have not only made our concepts clear through your presentation but also you have related it with the examples which were more interesting and ma'am i would also like to thank you for sharing your journey your so far journey with us and so on behalf of dr vn bedekar institute of management i would like to thank you both from the bottom of my heart for taking time from your busy schedule to be the guest speaker at our seminar your presence and wise words help magnify our cause in the best possible way our webinar was a huge success all thanks to your enlightening words that inspired so many so many people out there you have actually ignited a spark within us we look forward to have such wonderful interactions with you thank you thank you very much thank you sir namaste thank you thanks kalani thank you sir namaste. yes namaste. thank you ma'am thank, thank you sir thank, thank you, you. namaste yeah namaste yes i would uh, request students uh, that our it team has posted one uh, feedback link in the chat box so kindly uh, go through that link and provide your genuine feedback with us thank you so much thank you yes thank you so much sir